Hi, welcome to Big Door Trading Channel. In today's class, we will learn how to create the famous MACD indicator using the Pine Editor from the TradingView platform. To begin this lesson, we will include in the chart a standard MACD offered by TradingView itself. Note that in this settings window, it is possible to change some important settings for this indicator. Our job today is to recreate that MACD. To start, open your Pine Editor by clicking on this button right here. Delete everything written in your Pine Editor so that we can start a new code from scratch. In the first line of the code, we need to say which language version we are going to use. As version 4 is the most recent, so I will use version 4. In the second line of the code, we need to say whether our code is going to be an indicator or if the code is going to be a strategy. This code will be used to create an indicator, so I will use the study function. If you have questions about this part, watch the past classes where I talked about it. I will define the code title and the overlay. In this case, the overlay must be equal to false as we will want to plot the MACD in a separate window. Before starting the construction of MACD, let's get to know a little more about this indicator. MACD is an indicator of technical analysis based on moving averages that show downward or upward trends. MACD is the acronym for Moving Average Convergency Divergency. The indicator was created by Jared Apple in the 1960s. It is calculated by making the difference between a short-term moving average and a long-term moving average. The construction of the MACD therefore uses three main elements. A long-term exponential moving average, a short-term exponential moving average, and a exponential moving average of the MACD itself. Now that we know a little about this indicator, the first thing we should do is to define what the short-term exponential average will be used in calculating the indicator. So I'm going to create a variable called fast length and store the exponential average of 12 periods inside it. The function that returns the exponential moving average is called emma. Within the parameters, I need to define the source of the average calculation and the length. The second thing we should do in our code is to define what the long-term exponential average will be used in calculating the indicator. Then I will create a variable called slow length and store the value of the exponential average of 26 period inside it. The function that returns the exponential moving average is called emma. Within the parameters, I need to define the source of the average calculation and the length. Now let's create a variable called MACD. This variable will store the di difference between a short-term moving average and a long-term moving average. Put the equal sign and use the two variables we created above to make this calculation. After that, we will calculate the signal value. We do this by calculating an exponential moving average of the MACD itself. Now that we have our indicator calculated, I'm going to use a plot function to put that indicator on the chart. Now just click on add to the chart and see how it looks. However, it is not yet possible to modify the MACD using the settings window. To do this, let's go back to the pine editor and add some inputs to the code. The first input will aim to allow the user to define the value to be used in a short-term moving average variable. Define the name of the variable that will store the user-defined value. Start by writing what name your input will receive in the code, in which case I will call this input fast. Now, fast needs to be able to receive the value that the user selects in the properties window. We will do this using the input function. Within the parentheses, start by saying the default period of the short-term moving average. In this case, I will want the period 12. Then put a comma and use the title parameter to say the title of the input in the properties window. Repeat the process for all other inputs for your indicator. That done, just insert each input in its respective place in the code so that the user is able to configure the MACD through the properties window. Now just click on add to the chart and see how it looks.
you can now configure MACD outside the code. I hope this lesson was useful, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, thanks and see you in the next video.